after Japan defeated the two major powers who were interested in Korean Peninsula, Qing and Russia, Japan colonized Korea in 1910. Korean people lost their nation. And uh, in China, 1911, Sun Yat-sen staged Xinhai Revolution and the Qing Dynasty finally ended and Sun Yat-sen declared Republic of China. Many Koreans who were fighting against Japan for independence had to come to China or Russia. In Russia, Lenin was building Soviet Union and in China, the communism was becoming quite popular and the communists were very eager to help Korean independence fighters. I would like to end the part one on the subject of why Korea is divided in two. I will begin the part two with World War I. On June 28, 1914, a, a Serbian nationalist Gavrilo Princip assassinated Austria-Hungary Prince Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo. Austria-Hungary was determined to retaliate Serbia and uh, the Russians were trying to protect Serbia and the European major powers were lined up uh, behind Austria-Hungary or Russia. France, Britain uh, were behind Russia and uh, Germany and Italy were behind uh, Austria-Hungary and the former was called uh, Triple Entente and uh, the latter was called Triple Alliance. Nations in other parts of the world as well as European nations participated in the war. Japan uh, fought alongside Russia. China sent 100,000 engineer corps to Britain. The war greatly influenced Russian revolutions and the formation of Soviet Union. It also made communism very popular amongst Chinese people and it helped to create Communist Party in China. As Europeans busy in fighting in Europe, Japan was advancing her ambitions to China. And in the meantime, uh, Korean independent fighters were fighting against Japan in Manchuria, Russia, and mainland China. Naturally, communism was spreading amongst Koreans in Russia, Manchuria, and China. Since Bloody Sunday, 1905, factory workers and peasants continued to come out to the street demonstrate against the Tsar. The workers created St. Petersburg Soviet, uh, which was the base for Petrograd Soviet after revolution. But as soon as Russia entered into the World War I, the street became very quiet and Russians were united for the common enemy, Austria, Hungary, and Germany. In the beginning of the war, Russians won a few battles against Germany, but soon after, they were losing the battles against Germany one after another. In addition to that, the soldiers didn't have enough supply, like food and the clothing. So the soldiers became very discontented and they were angry and they are ready to mutiny. There were not enough food for people as well as soldiers. People were starving and the soldiers started to uh, desert. Desert rate was 34,000 per month 
and the refugees from the German occupied Russian territories uh, were millions. Naturally, the protest erupted again on 23rd of February 1917. It was International Women's Day. The women came out to street uh, demanding bread. The women demonstrators marched to the largest factory in St. Petersburg where the workers were striking and thousands of workers joined the women and uh, they demonstrated against the Tsar and uh, many citizens of St. Petersburg joined the demonstrators and Tsar uh, tried to bring soldiers to suppress the demonstrators uh, but uh, they refused it and instead, they fired upon the policemen who were trying to stop demonstration. The Russian Parliament Duma set up the provisional government and it asked Nicholas II to abdicate his throne. It was the end of Romanov Russian Empire. The new Russia without Tsar was governed by the Russian provisional government that was dominated by a large group of capitalists and the noble aristocracy. But the common people, the factory workers and peasants were represented by Petrograd Soviets. The first head of provisional government was Prince George the Wolf, who was elected by the Parliament Duma. But the group that had the power in the provisional government was Mensheviks and Socialist Revolutionaries. They wanted to make Russia to be a real democratic country. And the Wolf was not very effective for it. So they put Alexander Kerensky to be the head of the provisional government. Kerensky was very popular amongst the Russian people at that time. And uh, he gave uh, Russian people to have freedom of speech and he released political prisoners, but he continued war effort. With the February Revolution, all the banned political activities were allowed. Vladimir Lenin was in exile in Switzerland, and he heard the news about the February Revolution in Russia. He saw it as an opportunity to advance his Marxist agenda. Between Switzerland and Russia, the war was going on, and it was very hard to travel through it. Germany extended a helping hand to him. She knew that Lenin was against the war and uh, Lenin was very popular uh, in Russia. And if he returned to Russia, he would weaken the current government that was pro-war. In April 1917, he got on the train that was provided by Germany and came back to Russia. He advocated that Russia stop participating in the war and uh, granting the land to peasants and the bread to the people. Those were what people exactly wanted. They were united behind him. Uh, though uh, the people were indignant at fighting in the war, the provisional government decided to continue the war. On October 25, 1917, Bolsheviks, led by Red Army, toppled Kerensky's provisional government. So the one-party socialist government was formed and the capital city was moved from uh, Petrograd to Moscow. After the revolution, Bolshevik pulled out of the war by signing armistice with Germany. That was 
exactly what people wanted and uh, Lenin was deeply indebted to Germany. But the army officers who were loyal to the Tsar decided to fight against the Bolshevik Red Army. These officers would uh, take the lead in the White Army. Uh, the White Army um, consisted of many factions who were against the Bolsheviks. Kozaks, far-right, socialists, all of those were included in the White Army. Before revolution, Bolshevik promised tenant farmers that they would get their own farming land. But after revolution, uh, they um, took the tenant's land and uh, nationalized it. So Bolsheviks were very popular uh, in industrialized areas where a lot of factory workers were. Uh, but uh, the eastern part of Russia, where farming land uh, vast, uh, the peasants were very unhappy about the Bolsheviks policy. So they rose and uh, they joined in the White Army. Peasants uh, also created their own army that was called the Green Army. There were troops from minority nations around Russia. Uh, those nations uh, became part of Soviet Union later. Uh, those soldiers uh, fought alongside the White Army against the Bolsheviks. Allied nations, Great Britain, France, and America, and others did not like to see uh, Russia uh, becoming communist country. In addition, now Russia uh, was siding with Germany. Great Britain, America, France, Japan, and others sent troops to Russia uh, to fight against the Bolsheviks. And they also helped White Army by sending weapons and other necessary things uh, for the war. The White Army failed to unify uh, to make a one strong force that can effectively fight against the Bolsheviks. In contrast, the Bolsheviks uh, was very strong one force. They couldn't even coordinate with the Allied forces that were in Russia. The Western nations uh, stopped sending troops to Russia in 1920. Uh, but uh, they continued to send weapons to White Army uh, for a few years. Uh, however, Japan uh, kept sending uh, troops uh, to Russia after the Western nations stopped. And uh, they occupied the formidable territories in Siberia. During the Russian Civil War, um, the Korean independent fighters uh, fought against the Japanese alongside the Bolsheviks Red Army. The Russian Civil War began in 1918, a few months after the Bolsheviks October Revolution, ended in 1923 with the victory of Bolsheviks Red Army. And that uh, meant the creation of Soviet Union, uh, which affected a great deal to the formation of North Korea, a communist country. Germany signed an armistice on November 11, 1918, and the four major powers, uh, Great Britain, France, America, and Italy met in Paris to decide what to do the aftermath of the war.